Welcome back to another lesson on financial maths. Today, we're gonna to be talking about nominal and effective interest rates. Let's do some reading. Nominal interest rates, represented with the letter R. Compound interest rates quoted as percent per annum or annual interest rate. The compounding period represented by the letter N, the number of times in a year that the compound interest is calculated, yearly is one, monthly is 12, quarterly is four, etc. The more often the interest is calculated per year, the faster the rate of growth or decay. Then you've got effective interest rate. That's the rate of interest, that is the rate of interest given as percent per annum, which takes into account the effect of the number of compounding periods, often used to compare loan slash investments when the compounding periods are less than yearly. Even when the nominal interest rate is lower, if the number of compounding periods are higher, the effective interest rate may prove to be greater than that which is calculated just once a year. All right, so the effective interest rate is always going to be greater than the nominal interest rate, except if n is equal to one and then they're equal. Before we get into the example before us, can we just take note of something? And that is that the effective interest rate takes into account the effect of the number of compounding periods. Let's now see that in action here by looking at this table. So this table says, consider the table below showing the comparison of a loan of $30,000 uh, charging a nominal interest rate of 7.2% per annum if the interest is calculated yearly, quarterly, or monthly, or a monthly basis. Okay, so let's look at the first one here. We have yearly, so it's compounding yearly, so it's only compounding once per year. <clears throat> And the nominal interest rate is 7.2% per annum. So as you can see, we've got $30,000 there. And of course, by the end of the year, we're going to earn 7.2% of that money. So we're going to end up with $32,160. Uh, now, to figure out the interest that is charged here, what we're going to do is take the amount that we had at the end of the year and subtract it from the amount we had at the beginning of the year. And that's going to give us the amount of interest that it, we're going to be charged. If we now divide that number by what we started with, we can find the actual or the effective interest rate. And as you can see, it's 7.2% per annum, which is the same as the nominal interest rate we were given. And that relates to what we read up here when it says that, you know, the effective interest rate will always be greater than a nominal interest rate, except if n is equal to one and then they're equal. So here it's saying that the nominal interest rate and the effective interest rate are going to be equal to each other when our compounding period is simply one. But now let's look at the next one, and this is where things get interesting. Now we're going to compound quarterly. So that means every quarter, we're going to be charged an interest of 1.8% per quarter. So it's 1.8% per quarter. Remember, overall, it's still 7.2% per annum, because if I take 1.8 and I times it by four, because there's four quarters in a year, it will take me to 7.2. So it's still, as we're told up here, it's still 7.2% per annum, but now it's compounding quarterly. So that means if we look here, we start off with $30,000, but after the first quarter, we have this much. After the next quarter, it's this much. After the next quarter, it's that much. And then after the next quarter, it's that much. If we now take the final amount and subtract it from what we started with, we can see that the interest we're going to be charged at the end of the year is going to add up to $2,219. Do you see how that's more than what happened when we were only being charged, uh, when the compounding was only charged uh, yearly? It's more. If we take that number and we divide it by what we started with, the big thing that I need you to see now is that the percentage of the total is going to be 7.4% per annum. Do you see how that's more than the nominal interest rate? Because the nominal interest rate was 7.2. And that's because the nominal interest rate does not take into account the compounding periods. The effective interest rate does take into account the compounding periods and it's going to be more. See how it's more there? All right, let's now look at one more here. Let's look at, and I'll grab another color. Let's just grab yellow. What if it was being charged monthly? So now the compounding period is monthly at 0 0.6. Remember, this is the same as 7.2% per annum because if I take 0.6 and times it by 12 because there's 12 months in a year, I'm going to end up with 7.2. And as you can see, each month now, we are calculating the interest and it's adding up each time until we get to the very end. If I now take that last balance, 
So here, and subtract it from what, what I started with. Over the course of the year, I'm going to end up being charged an interest of 2,232, which is more than what it was quarterly, and of course more than what it was when it was compounded yearly. If I now take that number and divide it by what I started with and find the uh, percentage of that, it's going to be 7.44% per annum. So do you see how the effective interest rate is even more when it's compounding monthly in comparison to when it was compounding quarterly? And that's because the more times you compound, the more interest that is being generated by it. And that's exactly what we read here. We can see that the more often interest is calculated, the greater the effective interest rate. We went from 7.2, 7.4, 7.44. The effective interest rate is taking into account the amount of compounding periods. The nominal interest rate does not take into account the amount of compounding periods. So that is kind of the basics of the difference between the, uh, the effective and nominal interest rates. All right, hopefully that makes sense. We're now going to take a moment and go through a few more examples.